Hello, in this lecture we will study angles. Specifically, we'll introduce some basic vocabulary regarding angles. For example, what is the standard position of an angle or what are coterminal angles? More critically, we'll introduce the difference between degree and radians as ways to measure angles. So an angle is formed by two rays having a common end point. For example, here. The point where the rays meet is called the vertex of the angle. Now, if we think of the angle as opening in a specific direction, then we can label the sides of the angle as having an initial side and a terminal side. So if we label the vertex and one point on each side, we can use these to name the angle. So here, the vertex is labeled O, and on each side, we've labeled a point A and B. We can call this the angle AOB, thinking of it as starting at A, moving to O, and then ending at B or BOA would be the same angle, but in a different orientation. Instead of opening in one direction, it opens in the other, but it represents the same angular amount. It's also customary to use Greek letters to denote angles very often. So common choices, well, by far the most common Greek letter to represent an angle is theta, but if we have multiple angles, we may start with alpha, beta, etc. So here, for example, the angle theta is marked with a specific direction attached to it. Here, alpha is marked, but now going in the other direction. Now, in the xy plane, the standard position for an angle is to place the vertex at the origin and the initial side to be the positive x-axis. Here are two angles in standard position. Observe that we have placed the vertex at the origin and we have made one of the sides the x-axis, and in fact, not just any side, but the initial side. The angle begins at the x-axis and opens towards the other side. By convention, positive angles are those that represent a counterclockwise rotation, for example, in red, going from the initial side to the terminal side, we are rotating in a counterclockwise rotation, so this angle is positive. However, in contrast, if going from the initial side to the terminal side represents a clockwise rotation, that is a negative angular amount. So above, theta is positive because it rotates counterclockwise, whereas beta is negative, it rotates clockwise. So with some vocabulary about angles out of the way, how do we measure angles? One very common convention is to let 360 degrees represent an entire circular motion worth of rotation. Therefore, one degree is one 360th of that. Now, this is a totally arbitrary choice. It happens to have some very nice properties, which is why we go with it, but it is more or less something we as people decided to impose upon angles. One circular rotation is 360 degrees. So here is one full rotation. It's in standard position. We have the vertex at the origin. The initial angle is the x-axis, and then we rotate in the positive direction, so counterclockwise, all the way around to the same direction, the positive x-axis, that is 360 degrees. Halfway around would be 180 degrees, or half that. One third of the circle, 120 degrees. One quarter of the circle, 90 degrees, and so forth. So again, angle measures can be negative or they can also be bigger than 360 degrees. So here, for example, starting from the x-axis, we rotate down or in the clockwise direction by 60 degrees. So this is negative 60 degrees. So because the angle opens clockwise, this is a negative angle. Here, however, we are rotating counterclockwise. This is a positive amount. But observe, it is one complete rotation and then 40 more degrees. So 360 degrees for the complete rotation and 40 degrees more makes 400 degrees. Now two angles that are in standard position are called coterminal if they have the same terminal side. This doesn't mean necessarily they're exactly the same angle, they are coterminal. So they have the same initial side because they are in standard position and they have the same terminal side. That's what coterminal means. So how can this happen? So for example, from the previous diagram, the 400 degree angle we saw is coterminal with 40 degrees. Here's 40 degrees, starting from the x-axis, go counterclockwise 40 degrees. Here's 400, starting from the x-axis, go all the way around 360 and then 40 more, and observe your terminal side is the same ray that it was for just 40 degrees. So they're not the same angle, 
One is 40 degrees, one is 400. They are coterminal. Also, you can be coterminal here, negative 90 degrees, so open a quarter circle, but do so clockwise to make the angle negative, or three quarters of a circle counterclockwise, that would be positive 270 degrees. Not the same angle, but coterminal. Now, an angle in degrees can always be found to be coterminal to something between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, to find this coterminal angle, something between 0 and 360, something which is positive and within one standard rotation, if you have an angle that's bigger than 360 degrees, subtract 360 degrees until you're somewhere between 0 and 360. And by convention, our standard range of angles is to include zero, but not 360 degrees. So if you're bigger than or equal to 360 degrees, keep subtracting 360 until you're within zero inclusive and 360 degrees exclusive. However, if you have a negative angle, do the opposite. Add 360 degrees until you end up within that range of zero to 360. For example, find an angle between zero and 360 that's coterminal with the given angle, and there will be a few uh, problems here. First, 500 degrees and second, negative 711 degrees. So for part A, since we begin larger than 360 degrees, we subtract 360 degrees. Now we're at 140 degrees. This is in between zero and 360, so 500 is coterminal to its standard angle, 140 degrees. Next, Negative 711, well, that's negative, so we add 360 degrees. This results in negative 351. That's still negative. So we add 360 degrees again. If we add 360 degrees to negative 351 degrees, we're at 9 degrees. Now we are within 0 to 360, so negative 711 degrees is coterminal with a standard representation of 9 degrees. But what's a radian? You may have heard this term before. If not, welcome to the party. Radians are a way of measuring angles that comes from the relationship between angles and circles. So given a circle, an angle is called a central angle if you place the vertex to be at the center of the circle. So here's a nice little diagram. We've made an angle, and instead of letting the rays go off to infinity, we cut them off at the circle itself. That's just so the picture fits. And we've placed the vertex of the angle at the center of the circle. Now we can measure the arc subtended by the angle. So here, for example, if we label this angle as theta, the red subtended arc has a length associated to it. So if we let r be the radius of the circle, theta is the angle we're measuring, and s is the length of that arc, the radian measure of the angle is defined to be the ratio between the arc s and the radius r. Now s and r are both lengths, so however you're measuring your lengths, the unit of measurement will cancel out. So theta, as an angular representation, is dimensionless. It has no unit measurement. This is what we call radians. If theta, this ratio of the arc length s to the radius r is less than one, well that means you have subtended an arc smaller than the radius of the circle, whereas if theta is bigger than or equal to one, you have subtended an arc at least as large as the radius. We write theta to be theta radians or just theta equals s over r, this ratio, without any symbol like you would use for degrees. If you just write the amount, it is assumed to be in radians. Now, before we move on, I ask how many radians of angle does it take to go all the way around the circle? If we went all the way around the circle of radius r, we will have subtended an arc, which is the entire circumference of that circle. So the entire circular angle measured in radians would be the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its radius. Which means in radians, one full rotation is 2 pi. That is the ratio of a circumference to a radius. Pi is defined as the ratio between the circumference and diameter of a circle, and a radius is half that, so the ratio would be twice as large. So other angles are typically written as multiples of pi. For example, rotating all the way around the circle is 2 pi radians. Halfway around the circle would be half of that, or pi. A quarter of the way around would be a quarter of 2 pi, which is pi over 2, and so forth. So here's a table listing some common angles, both in degrees and radians. Observe that 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi radians, and various conversions of other angles, which are commonly found, such as 30, 60, 90, 45, 120, and so forth. 
Now, how do we convert angles back and forth between degrees and radians? Since pi radians halfway around the circle is the same as 180 degrees also halfway around the circle, one radian is 180 degrees divided by pi, or similarly, one degree is pi divided by 180 radians. So we can use these fractions to convert back and forth. If you want to go from degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180. If you want to go from radians to degrees, multiply by 180 over pi. So how would we convert the following four angles in degrees into radians? Now, since we're converting from degrees to radians, we simply need to multiply by pi over 180 degrees. So 30 times pi over 180, the degree units will cancel out, leaving pi over 6. 225 times pi over 180 is 5 pi over 4 radians. Negative 150 times pi over 180 is negative 5 pi over 6 radians. And finally, 400 times pi over 180 simplifies to 20 pi over 9 radians. And very similarly, to convert from radians to degrees, we simply multiply by 180 over pi. So 3 pi over 4 radians times 180 over pi becomes 270 degrees. 7 pi over 3 radians times 180 over pi becomes 420 degrees. And negative 4 pi over 3 radians times 180 over pi is negative 240 degrees. Converting back and forth is really just a matter of remembering that there are 180 degrees per pi radians. But I will tell you, while many people at this point in their mathematical lives are most comfortable and most familiar with degrees as measuring angles, it is recommended if you are going to be studying math at the calculus level or beyond, get very comfortable with radians. Radians are the natural way to measure angles, whereas degrees are a human invention of deciding to divide a circle into 360 little pieces. But if you're going to do calculus involving angles, you want to be using radians and not degrees.